Now the years are 212 to 204. 212-204 BC. This is his third campaign after gaining strength. And the third campaign happening 201 BC. So from 212 to 204 he gained strength. In 201 BC, he goes against the south. He goes against Egypt. Syria goes against Egypt. In verse 13, it says some years. The some years here are about 13 or 14 years later. Your king of the south, of verse 14, I ask you to circle verse 14, the king of the south. You have it. It's Ptolemy IV, Epiphanes. He is on your small E, on your outline. Guess what? He was four years old when he became a king. He was an infant. He was four when he was appointed a king. Of course, he has his consular and so on, but he was appointed king at the age of four. And which one? The uh, Ptolemy the Fourth Epiphanes. He was four when he became a king. Uh, that's number five. Uh, Ptolemy five. That's a B. That's it's, oh, it's, it's it, it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you were fifth. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, the, the, I write in Roman numeral and I misread myself. It's Ptolemy the the, the fifth. He is Epiphanes, yes, that's, that's pro proper. The outlines are correct, I was not proper here. The many will rise in verse 14. The many will rise. Many will rise up against the king of the south. Again? Yeah, it's Philip V. It was Philip V, was one of them. Philip V, he was from Macedonia, Macedonia, rather, Macedonia, Macedon, Macedonia. And he was the many that rose up, and he was with, not against, anti Antiochus III the Great. He, he allied with Antiochus III the Great against Egypt to divide the spoil. Another one that we know, Agatho. Agathos, so Agathocles here with Philip. That's another one that ally with them. Agathocles. He joined against Egypt also. In verse 14, I would like to draw your attention on the violent ones, violent ones among your people. It's a prophecy given to Daniel. What kind of a people are Daniel? Jews. The Jews here. Okay, the violent ones are Jews. They are helping Antiochus III the Great against Egypt. So a cluster of Jews... were attempting to help, to help who? Antiochus III, the Great, which is Syria, against Egypt. <clears throat> okay? They ally. Those Jews here, if you, if you wanted the, kind of a, the Jews are right here, where is my Jerusalem? Here, they ally with Syria to go against the south. That's simple, a group of violent ones meaning fighting. The leader of them was Tobias. Now we're talking about the Jewish person, not a king or just a small cluster of Jews. That's what you can call a small revolt. The small revolt was in order to free Israel, and it failed.
In verse 15, the king of the north will come, cast up a siege ramp, and capture a well-fortified city, and the forces of the south will not stand their ground, not even their choicest troops, for there will be no strength to make the stand. That's what record the defeat of Egypt in 201 BC. This is the defeat of Egypt in 201 BC. In 201 BC. Simply put in your notes, those who like the history of Israel, by 199 BC, Israel was not anymore under Egyptian control. By 199 BC, Israel was not anymore under Egyptian control, but they were under Syria control. And I have a friend of mine that lives to Israel, he is Syrian, and it, it doesn't go very far in history, only 2,000 some years ago, basically. Okay? So Egypt was now totally defeated by the Syrians in 201 BC. Egypt was totally defeated by the Syrians. So it's no longer the prime of the Pharaoh of Egypt in the time of Exodus. They decline in history, and now the Syrians have won over them. Verse 16 talks about the conquest of Egypt. In verse 16, the he, but he, in verse 16, circle, I don't want to make a mistake, the he is Antiochus the third, the great, the north, of the north. But he, Antiochus the third, the great, I'm paraphrasing the text, who comes against him, the him is Ptolemy the fifth, Epiphanes. Hold that against. Ptolemy. Against him. Ptolemy who? It's on your outline on small e, Ptolemy the fifth, Epiphanes. Abbreviate. Okay, good stuff. Great. You see, it makes sense. I'm just trying to go slow to accommodate. The beautiful land, circled out, the beautiful land in Daniel is always, it's not Vancouver Island, it's Israel. The beautiful land. And with it, Antiochus the third, the great from Syria. Look, Antiochus the great. Antiochus the third, the great, is not Ptolemy, is from Syria, invaded Israel. Now they come under the control here, the control of the land of Israel in those years, 199, 2000, 200, and 201. All right, now Israel will now start to pay taxes. And under Antiochus the third, the great, he was not that bad. Israel, here, Jerusalem and Israel, and the land will start to pay taxes here, to Syria. But he exempt the priest, the temple service, he exempt them of tax. Only the common people. He exempt the, the temple. The priest, okay, the priesthood, the Kohen, to pay tax and so on. Simply put, also, now there is a taxation, an Israeli taxation paid to Syria in our context of today. Who was, who was um, governing, who was in control of Israel at this time, the priesthood? The priesthood at that time, the temple was standing, okay? Now, verse 17, verse 17, he will set his face to come with the power of his old kingdom, that he is Antiochus the third, the great. And he tried to gain power of Egypt by marriage again in 197 BC. He will try to gain the power of Egypt by marriage. That's why you find sometimes Solomon marrying the daughter of Pharaoh. It's to gain political power, even from a good king like Solomon. Now, verse 17, Antioch Antiochus III, the great, gave his daughter named Cleopatra. 
he gave his daughter Cleopatra to be the wife of Ptolemy the fifth Epiphanes. I repeat that. We're just about done. Another five minutes. Antiochus the third, the great from Syria, gave his daughter Cleopatra to be the wife of, a, of an Egypt, Ptolemy the fifth Epiphanes in 197 BC. Do you know how old was Ptolemy the fifth Epiphanes? He was seven years old. You can see that the marriage was to gain power. The marriage was to gain power, but Cleopatra will not choose to side with her father. Cleopatra will choose to side with her husband, seven years old, not her father to gain political control. She will side with the husband. She will prove to be a good wife. And in verse 18, then he will turn his face to the coastland and capture many. Circle that. The he that will turn his face to capture many is Antiochus III the Great. Listen closely because we're getting home here. Antiochus III the Great from Syria is deceived by giving his daughter Cleopatra, thinking that she would side with him, but she side with the husband. Now he turns to the coastline here. Turns to the coastline. What do you find in the coastline? Rome and Asia Minor in 196 BC. Because he saw the Roman Empire slowly increasing, he goes against them. And that's my delight this morning, because you have Babylonian, Medo-Persia, Hellenistic Empire, and then you have between that, that battle and now one that is rising on power slowly, it's Rome. So he goes against Rome, and as they were only rising in power. They're not in power there yet, but they're rising in power. So that's why, listen, we are in 196 BC right now, and Christ was born between 5 and 6 BC. So he is only less than 200 years ago now, away. Do you see the exactness of the Bible again? And that's why this is the part that the critics of the book of Daniel treat Daniel as being a phony, because this was so fulfilled, literally and exactly. And it's a part that, beloved, again, without any kind of pretension on camera, on video, or present in class, you, you are exposing yourself probably once in your lifetime to such a thing, unless you research it by yourself. And here, where you get only, I have encyclopedias, it's, it's very dry reading, and I didn't want to bug you, but at least you know these guys, and you know what they bring forth. So, in verse 18, I ask you to circle also the word commander, Whatever you have, but the commander will put a stop to his corn. Take your deep breath. The commander's name was Lucius, L-U-C-I-U-S, Cornelius, C-P-O, Lucius, Cornelius, C-P-O, Asiaticus. I wanted to name my daughter this way, but Olga said no. <laughs> so his name of the commander was Lucius Cornelius Scipio Asiaticus. He was the commander at that time. And in 191 BC, was he Syrian? Was he Egyptian? Was he Roman? Was he Rome? Rome. In 191 BC, Antiochus III the Great was defeated in Athens, north of Athens. He was defeated north of Athens. Antiochus III the Great was defeated north of Athens, which is basically Asia Minor. And in verse 19 of the account, so he will turn his face towards the fortress of his own land, but he will stumble and found and be found no more. You have the death 
of Antiochus III the Great. The year was 187 BC. You have the death of Antiochus III the Great in 187 BC. He died while he was paying tribute to Rome and so on. He returned in defeat. He returned in Syria in defeat. And that sets the stage. Make a note of this. He returned to Syria in defeat of the coastline. And that sets the stage for what we call the further Roman expansion. So that's why now you can picture in your mind, to an extent only, which is very more than no extent at all, that the Syria, the conflict of today, paving the way that when Christ was born, it was a Roman dominance. It's beautiful to know that at least. That it was not out of the blue, out of the vacuum cleaner, that the Roman was there. You know a little bit of this story now, because uh, there was always a polit political football in the time of the next Antiochus Epiphanes IV, between Syria and Egypt, and the Israel was always in between, and so it's a small country, you know, that kind of stuff. We take the last, very short, we take the last, I think I'm done. We finish with Seleucus the fourth Philopator, only one verse. Beautiful, I was not expecting to. It's lowercase f on your outline, page 10 of your outline, Seleucus the fourth Philopator 20, come with me. Then in his place, circle in his plane, what circle in his plane, in his place one will arise, who will send an oppressor, circle an oppressor, to the jewel of his kingdom. Yet within a few days, circle a few days, he will be shattered, though not in anger nor in battle. Your Seleucus for Philopater is the king right now. In the verse 20 is the king right now. That's why this is Seleucus, the fourth Philopater. And when I ask you to circle in his place, in his place, who's that person? This is Antiochus the third, the great. And then I ask you, who will send an oppressor? That oppressor is Eliodorus. That's the name of the oppressor in history, Eliodorus, to collect more tax. It was the tax being paid to? Syria. Okay, thank you. Eliodorus to collect more tax from the temple and the priest. So now they go with more harsh, more servitude. And now you understand the zealot in the, 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 the life of the Messiah. Why he gets against Rome? Because now the priests are no longer spared. Everybody pays high taxation. Never ends. <laughs> <laughs> Seleucus the fourth, Philopater, which is the person in verse twenty, reign. It was short, eleven years. He reigned only. His father's reign, his father was Antiochus the Great the Third, was a longer reign, 37 years. <clears throat> and Seleucus the Fourth reign was short, he was poisoned. I repeat, Seleucus the Fourth had a short reign, that's why I ask you to circle in verse 20 within a few days. Your few days are 11 years. Okay. Within a few days, he will be shattered. Do not in anger nor battle. So that you can circle, do not in anger nor battle. He did not fall on the battleground. What happened to him? I just gave you the answer. He was poisoned. poisoned. Who poisoned him? Hey. His wife? I don't know. I don't know. In that case, I would need to read more. We, Arda, was not that bad, eh? So maybe one more shot of, uh, no, actually, we get into stuff because look at, look who is next. 
Take, take a moment with me on page 10. It's number four, Antiochus Epiphanes. This is the famous one that gives us the Feast of Hanukkah. Will be very, very harsh against the Jews here. We will talk about his rise, first campaign, third campaign. We don't have the second recorded. Persecution of the Jews. It's, it's insane what he did. And then look at number five. And you read, please finish your book of Daniel. I would say another session like this and plus one more. Go on. Daniel is behind your belt. Freddie. Father, we thank you for the time together to get together and to study your word, Father. We thank you for we thank you for using Francois the way you do, Father. To help us understand your word, Father, a little better. Father, we pray as we go our own way today that you be with us, be with us through the week, Father. Uh, keep us safe, Father, in the midst of uh, of what's going on out there, Father. Mm -hmm. um, we're thankful and grateful, Father, though, that we do not have to fear this. You are in control, and that ultimately your will will be done. Father, we thank you again for this time. We just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Freddie. Just by means of announcements, those of you that are uh, will be watching uh, these things online will be made accessible actually to everybody through our website find a way to find the website basically you go to our website you click on video classes and then you gently scroll down until you see a blue rectangle and click on classes and so on you know with just one word to you with uh, the humility of my heart let us not use the situation for a, a, an occasion not to support so even those online who are watching all these things online you know we transfer, you know the issue of what we call PayPal and so on. Rally together, Father, you, yeah, not Father, but beloved. You know that this is my commitment in life. This is the work that I do, so I'm asking you, those who watch online, do not make contact with us for whatever circumstances. Have this sensitivity in mind, dear beloved. I thank you, those who will be watching, and I thank those who are in class with us. God bless you, and see you later. Thank you, everybody, for what you do will be done and so on. Stay tight together. Let's pray and carry on fighting the good fight. We bid you shalom. Thank you.